In this lesson, we're doing a basic statistics overview of different uh, graphs you will see. So we're going to look at box and whisker plots, dot plots, and histograms. So let's get started. First, let's start off by taking a look at some words that we need to know. The first word is the mean. That is the average of the values. So remember to find the average of a set of numbers. You simply divide the sum. So you add all of your numbers together, and then you divide it by the number of values that you have. So that is your mean. Next, we have the median. That is the middle number. And of course, you have to arrange the numbers from smallest to largest. If you have two numbers in the middle, then you will take the average of those two numbers. So you will add it together and then divide by two. Next, you have the mode, which is the most often occurring number. So remember, mode is most. Next, we have the lower extreme. Another word is the minimum. That's basically the smallest value. Upper extreme, so of course that would be your maximum or your largest value. Next, we have the lower quartile. That is uh, the median of the lower half. And we usually use uh, Q sub one for that. So median of the lower half of data. Next, we have the upper quartile. So of course that would be the median of the upper half and we will call that Q sub three. Next, we have the range. Uh, you're subtracting the maximum minus the minimum or basically uh, the highest and lowest number. So the difference between the highest and lowest number would be your range. Next, you have the inner quartile range. That is the difference of the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So you're subtracting Q sub three minus Q sub one. And last, we have outliers. That is a number that is uh, significantly higher or lower than the rest of the set of data. Um, so outlier, think of outside. It is drastically greater or lower than the rest of the numbers. Let's take a look at example one. We want to find uh, the given information, uh, mean, median, mode, and so forth, using this data set. So first, to find the mean, that is the average. So I'm going to add all of my numbers up. So if I add all of my numbers here, I get 130. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 numbers. So 130 divided by 10 is 13. So my mean or my average is 13. Next, I have the median. Uh, to find the median, you want to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. So my smallest number here is four. So I wanna start off with four. Then I look for all of my other numbers that are the same. So I have another four here. And it helps to kind of cross out or circle um, the numbers that you're using. So that way you're not missing any numbers. All right, so my next highest number is 10. So I have one, two, three, 10. So I'm gonna write 10 three times. My next highest is a 14. I only have 114. Next, 15, 16, 22, and 25. Now I know I have a total of 10 numbers, so I'm just gonna double check by counting the numbers I just wrote. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I always double check to make sure you did not miss any numbers. Now to find the mean or the median, which is the middle number, I'm just gonna start to kind of look at each end. So I'm blocking off the four, the 25, the other four, the 22. I'm trying to get my numbers left in the center. So notice I have four numbers on each end that I've marked out, right? And I have two numbers left in the center. Um, when that happens, you just find the average. So adding 10 plus 14 and dividing by two because I have two numbers. So 24 divided by two is 12. So the median is 12. And of course, if you had an odd set of numbers, you would just have one number in the middle and that one number would be um, the median. But since we have an even amount of numbers, you're gonna have two numbers in the middle and you would just find the average of those numbers. Uh, next, we have the mode. Most often occurring is 10, because I see 10 three times. Lower extreme, which is the minimum. My smallest number is four. Up extreme, which is the maximum. Largest number is 25. Lower quartile is the median of the lower half, or your Q sub one. 
So my lower half, I'm going to split this set of numbers in order, well, in um, to two parts. So I have 10 values, and so I'm going to have five on each side. One, two, three, four. So I could draw a line here. And make sure you're using the data that you put in order. So I have 10 on each side. And of course, if you had an odd set of numbers, you would just you would not include uh, the median. Okay. So I have five numbers on each side. The median of my lower half is 10. The median of my upper half is 16. Next, the range, I'm subtracting um, the smallest from the largest number. So 25 minus four is uh, 21. And the interquartal range, remember the median, um, well, the range between your upper and lower quartile. So I'm using the 16 here and the 10. So 16 minus 10 will give me six. So I have found all my values for this data set. All right, so for example three, I would like for you to try this problem on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find these values on your own. So these are the answers you should have gotten. So pause the video and check your answers. Hopefully you got them correct. The first type of graph we're going to uh, look at is a box plot, or it's often called a box and whisker plot. And that displays a five number summary for a data set. The minimum, first and third quartile, the median, and the maximum values. And so those are some of the words that we just learned or we reviewed. And in the previous slide, we learned how to find those values. And um, in a box and whisker plot, a quartile is 25% of the data, and you'll see. If you look at this box and whisker plot here, um, we have four pieces. So this would be um, 25%. Each piece would be 25% there. And notice some of the same words here. We had a lower and upper quartile, minimum and maximum value, or the lower extreme and upper extreme. And notice where the dots are. So the last points would be your minimum and maximum. Um, the median would be in the middle of your, well, not in the middle, but it would be inside of your box. And the end of your box would be the upper and lower quartile. All right, so let's look at some problems um, involving a box and whisker plot. So let's take a look at interpreting a box and whisker plot. Uh, the first thing I want to do is um, label everything. So for um, graph A, this would be my minimum, maximum. This is Q1, which is um, the lower quartile, and Q3, which is the upper quartile, and then this would be my median here. Same thing, max, min, median, Q1, so lower quartile and upper quartile. All right, so let's look at um, what we need to, uh, these problems here. Uh, this is what is the median of each data set. So for A, uh, the median here would be 70. And B, oh, same thing. So the data, the median for both sets is 70. Which plot has a lesser range? And so my, for graph A, that would be 100. So my maximum minus the minimum, minus 50. So for graph A, the range would be 50. Graph B, um, 100 minus 40. So graph B, the range would be 60. And so it says which plot has a lesser range? That would be graph A. Which plot has the greater interquartile range? And I can simply look at the boxes. This is a larger box. This goes from um, from 85 to 60. This is smaller that goes from 80 to um, 65. So here, this would be 25. From here to here, that would be from 65 to 80, that would be 15. And so that would be graph B. Give the upper quartile of each data set. So right here, at the edge of my box here so that would be 80 for graph a 
graph B will be at 85 right here. All right, give the lower extreme of each data set. So another word for lower extreme is the minimum. So 50 for graph A or plot A and 40 for plot B. What percent of your data plot I'm sorry, what percent of your data in plot B is between uh, 60 and 85? So plot B between 60 and 85, which is here. Remember, each little piece is 25%. So that would be a total of 50%. What percent of the data in plot A is greater than 80%? So plot A greater than 80%. Sorry, it's getting a little messy. So right here greater than 80% and that's only 25%. So each little piece is 25%. And last, what percent of the data in plot B is less than 85? So plot B less than 85. So 85 is here, all right? So 25, 25 and 25%. So 25 plus 25 plus 25 would be um, 75 percent. So we have found the answers to these questions using this box and whisker plot here. All right, so for the example I would like for you to try, I have a real life situation here. Uh, I would like for you to find the minimum, maximum, median, upper, and lower quartile, create a box and whisker plot from the information that you find, as well as answer parts uh, A through E for this question. So go ahead and pause the video and try this problem on your own. Here are your answers for example four. Go ahead and pause the video and check your answers. Hopefully you got them correct. So the next type of graph we're going to look at is a histogram. That is a way of grouping data into intervals. So as you can see here, we have the intervals at the bottom here between 51 and 60, 61 and 70, and so forth. So let's answer these questions um, about the number of students uh, and the algebra test scores. Um, but before I answer the questions, I'd like to just um, put the amount of people or items above my bar here. So it's two here, so that would be four. Nope, not four. That actually be five. This goes up to eight. This is 12. And this goes up to six. So it says, how many total students took the test? So I'm simply going to add all these numbers. Two plus five plus eight plus 12 plus six. That is 33 students. All right, next, how many students score at least a 71 on the test? So that means um, they score more than a 71. So at least 71, meaning they score more than 71. So that would be 8 plus 12 plus 6. That is 26. So 26 students. All right. And can you determine the highest grade from the histogram? That would be no because we have just an interval here. And so we don't know what scores are within this interval. So we cannot determine who scored the highest grade. Um, doesn't have to be a 100. It just says the grades were between 91 and 100. So we cannot determine the highest grade there. Okay, so of course I have a problem here that I would like for you to try on your own. So go ahead and pause the video and answer these questions about the histogram you see here. Hopefully you got it correct. Your answers are 12, 19, and no. So if not, go ahead and just analyze uh, the graph here a little more, but hopefully you got it correct. The last type of graph we're gonna look at is called uh, a dot plot. That is a graphical display of, of course, using dots. Uh, each data value is represented by a dot above the number line. The dot plot shows the frequency of the values the frequency is how often that data value occurs. Um, you should always include a title and a title and an appropriate scale for your number line because you want to always count from you know by ones 
So you should have a scale. And the dot plots are often used for smaller sets of data. Um, and normally we use discrete data with it. And that is where there's only um, a certain, certain numbers are possible. So no, um, usually no decimals there. So here we have an example of a dot plot. Um, this is a group of college students were surveyed about the number of books they read each month. The data set is listed below. And so we have these numbers here. So let's just take, for example, if we look at the number three, right? So there's four threes, right? One, two, three, four. So of course, over the number three, you're going to have four dots. So that is how you would display data on a dot plot. The last example I have here, it says Miss Smith surveyed her class and asked each student, how many siblings do you have? The results are displayed below. So we want to create a dot plot using this real life situation and then just answer some questions um, about uh, the information here or the data here. So the first thing, part A, it says we want to construct a dot plot for the graph. So let's name it number of siblings. And we see here that we have all of our numbers are between um, 1 and 10. So I just number the line 1 through 10. And next, make sure you count the numbers, the amount of uh, values that you have. I have a total of 18. And I do that because when I put the points on my graph, I want to make sure I have 18 dots on my graph just to make sure I didn't miss any numbers. So now starting with 0, I have 0. I have three zeros, so I'm going to put three dots above zero. Next, um, one, so I have one, two, three, four, four ones. One, two, three, four. Next, number two, one, two, uh, three, four, five. I have five twos. One, two, three, four, five. And try to put your dots an equal distance apart. All right, three. I have three threes, one, two, three, fours. I have one, two, two fours. Do I have any fives? No, six, no, seven, no. I have one eight here. So I think I'm done, but I'm gonna double check and count my dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I have 18 dots, so my dot plot is correct. Part B, it says, what observations can you make about the shape? Most of the data is clustered together and are small in value. So it's clustered together right here. There is one value that is further away from the rest of the data, and that would be eight. So we could say eight would be an outlier. Are there any values that seem outside of the norm for the distribution? And of course, we just mentioned eight. Um, it is very high compared to others. And as I mentioned, it is an outlier. And so um, eight siblings is quite a bit. So that is an outlier. And so we have drawn our dot plot and analyzed this situation here a little more. All right, so we've reached the end of our lesson. I want to thank you for learning with me. Some related videos are two-way frequency tables and measures of center and spread. If you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, I want to thank you for learning with me.